Hey, welcome back. I'm Sean Barnett at Looking Point. We help IT organizations make decisions around collaboration, security, and networking. Today we're talking about warehouse design. This is the continuation of what we started on this series, and today we're going to be talking about wired network design and wireless with regard to the warehouse design. Let's go! back and we are continuing on with our warehouse design. Now we're going to be talking about wired network design and wireless network design and to do a brief recap uh, I wish we had the little button that you could click that just says skip the recap but anyway we don't. So we talked about the floor plan layout, we talked about power and backup and we talked about device management and I don't want to be redundant you know what we're talking about so let's get into it. So I'm going to get rid of the noise and we are going to add a layer here and we're good. All right, so let's talk about wired design. We're back to our warehouse and we're thinking about the wired network design. Now, in a smaller warehouse, like the one that we started out with, where it's 100, 100 feet by 200 feet, it's not as important to really think about wired design. You, you do want to think about it, but you're probably not going to have many conditions where you're going to run into distance limitations with Cat6. In a larger warehouse, that is going to be a concern. And so we're gonna assume that you're, you're dealing with a larger warehouse in this case. Regardless of your use case, the concepts are gonna apply regardless of the size. You'll wanna think about these things. It just may be a lot less effort in a smaller warehouse than a large warehouse. So um, we're gonna assume that we're gonna have in this warehouse two IDFs. And uh, to recap, IDFs have switches in them and somewhere in the warehouse we will have an MDF and that will have switches as well and so we will call this MDF and we will call this IDF and we are going to have some connectivity here now depending on the distance limitation or the speeds required for your design you may choose fiber or you may choose cat6 and that's going to be relative to your specific design. It could be distance, it could be bandwidth, or it could just be the ease of pulling less, you know, less large cables or, or, uh, or the things that you're thinking about with out-of-band management and things like that. It's easier to pull a multi-stranded fiber connection, just pull one of them to one IDF and one to the other. And uh, you have maybe you know, six, 12 strands of fiber in there, and you're going to use you know, a couple strands for your uplink and a couple strands for your management, and you got a couple extra if, you know, you need them in the future. Um, or you could use CAT6 and pull, you know, three, four, five pulls uh, from your MDF to your IDF to get, get your connectivity. So you're going to have to make your, your choice there based on all of your requirements and uh, what makes the most sense. So as we're talking about the design, what we're thinking about, we're taking into account the floor plan that we talked about, we're thinking about the placement of these uh, switches. And the reason why we're thinking about the placement is really where do I need ethernet drops in my warehouse and where will they come from? And so ideally we wanna be in the distance limitation a cat six for all those drops. And we're gonna wanna, you know, this is a top down view if we had an elevation and we had a, a warehouse like this and we had our IDF up in the ceiling like that, we would wanna calculate the span to go over and the span to go down. And a lot of times when we get into a warehouse, on paper you go line of sight, straight shot, I could get a drop here and it makes sense and you go, we're good. But the reality is a lot of times there's gonna be racking, there's going to be some type of, of pillar or column that's structural that's gonna hold the warehouse up and it's gonna make more sense for the cable installer to run the cable in a bundle, you know, down down one of these uh, these structures, you know, maybe it's a, a a truss of some sort. They're going to run it down the truss and they're going to run it down the edge of the warehouse, and then from there they're going to drop it down. So that would maybe look like something to you know go back to this shrinking uh, version. This would be over, down the wall, around the corner, and down, and so. On the side profile, it would look very similar to this, even though your side run would be a lot longer and down. And so you want to calculate 
all those runs when you're thinking about the placement and the network design. So now when we, we start looking at this design and we look at our drop locations, we want to think about how many ports do I need in this, in this IDF. And you also need to think about how many APs you have, if there's any video surveillance in the warehouse, that's going to take up ports. And so sometimes as you're looking at the network design, you may just count up the network drops and go, okay, a 24 port switch will, will do well. And then you don't really think about, well, I've got seven cameras in here. Well, you may need some more, more ports. And then also we've got some wireless APs. We got seven APs over here. And so it quickly adds up all the ports that you need. So that is really the things that, or those are the things that you need to think about as you're designing the wired network. So to recap real quick, it's the type of connectivity from IDF to MDF. That's important. Is it fiber or is it copper? Looking at all the drop locations and thinking about the path that the wire installer is going to run them will determine where your IDFs go. And also thinking about what are the peripherals hanging off this IDF that I need to count that I need to account for in order to have the right switch port count. And once you find out the switch port count, it may change what you need to get back to the MDF. And so it really is a, a, a process of looking at the floor plan that we talked about already, thinking about the switch locations, thinking about the port requirements, thinking about the wireless requirements. And so almost the way that we've gone through this video, you'll want to build out your design almost in the reverse order, but thinking about all the things that we talked about. So let's shift now to wireless. So I'm going to get rid of this, I'm going to add this, and let's talk about wireless design. Wireless design in warehouse, we could do a whole series on this. We're not going to get into the, the details of antenna selection, AP placement, coverage zones, you know, all of those things, because that is a big part of a wireless design, especially when it comes to warehouse. But in, at a high level, we're just going to cover the things that, in general, you want to think about. Again, we're going to be looking at our warehouse, and if we've got racks, these racks could be 10 feet high, they could be 15 feet high. Um, you could have a manufacturing line in here, um, and you could have you know different pieces of machinery that need to have wireless access. Um, you could have folks that are walking physically in here with a scanner. You could have folks on a on a on a forklift driving around. And so really you just need to understand what are your requirements for wireless coverage. And more importantly than that, what type of bandwidth requirements are there? And I would start when doing a wireless design is making sure that the peripherals that you're using, the scanner, the handhelds, any type of machinery that needs wireless access, understanding what the capabilities of each of those are, those peripherals, so whether it's a handheld or machinery, understanding their wireless capabilities. And so based on that, then I would design the network. And so when we look at AP placement, there are multiple ways you can design the wireless network. You could do internal based antennas in an AP. That won't give you a lot of flexibility, um, but it will have a consistent, a consistent signal, and, uh, but it won't give you a lot of tuning or flexibility. And so in a warehouse, I would say inter going with internal antenna APs would probably not be my first choice. In an office, it's perfect, it's designed for that. But in a warehouse, I think you would want some additional options. And where I would start in a warehouse would be with an omnidirectional antenna. It kind of just looks like this. And um, typically, those will either come in an array, um, and then they'll come on a, on a platform and have some wires that go to the AP. And in some APs, it just depends on your manufacturer, they may have uh, antenna screw holes and you just screw them in and they come out like this. Um, so those dipole an antennas, you can imagine, emit a signal and I'm just gonna add another layer here because um, we're going a little deeper than I planned, but why not? We got the time. So we have a dipole antenna and the signal essentially comes out like a donut. And this is in a, a 360 degree kind of, you know, angle, it kind of goes around. And so from a top down view, it would be like, you know, it'd be kind of like, you know, bum, 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 comes out like a donut. And so, so that's how the signal will go. 
And so when you think about uh, it being in a warehouse and that AP being potentially up all the way to the ceiling height, you need to think about cell size. And so what do I mean by cell size? So I'm gonna draw a warehouse and we can imagine this is 25 feet and you have an AP here with your dipole sticking down and you have an AP with your dipole sticking down. It's possible that the distance from here to here is 25 feet. And it's also possible that the distance from here to here is 30 feet. And in this case, some APs start to control their signal strength. And they go, hey, I see this guy, I see this guy. And they start to automatically back down their signal strength. Well, you have a person with a handheld, uh, and I'll draw a little, this is a horrible laptop. I'm not an artist, more of a network guy. So let's just say this is a laptop. Oh, that's looking pretty good. I'm pretty proud of that one. Uh, let's say this is a laptop or a handheld, and it's talking wirelessly up to this AP. Well, that's 25 feet away. This AP is 30 feet. They back down their power. It's possible that you could be right by the AP, and it would back down its signal strength and your, your signal strength on your, on your uh, laptop won't be that great. So you really wanna think about cell size and you wanna think about are Omnis the right choice or do I want a patch antenna? And a patch antenna is essentially a flat square. That could be an option. And that could emit more of a cone type coverage down below. And so that would mean that AP to AP, they wouldn't see each other, but you would get from a surface downward, and I'll, I'll get rid of this and I'll add this. This would mean that from a top-down approach, if you had an AP and an AP, and you had a patch, panel, uh, patch antenna, maybe you get coverage zones like this, and AP to AP crosstalk would be maybe more minimized. Um, the last thing you want to think about is bands. You know, do you do 802.11a and b, or do you disable b um, and just keep a? And that creates uh, more, more non-overlapping channels, but it also requires smaller cell size because b doesn't go, or a doesn't go as far as b. And so uh, you could think about AP placement. You know, a lot of our guys talk about triangles. They like triangles when they design these. They don't like squares, so a square, AP placement would be like this. Uh, that would be a square. They really like to try to get triangles. It's not always easy and not always perfect, but that's just kind of a rule of thumb. You'd want to be something like this as opposed to kind of get the idea. Um, so as opposed to being four, four APs closer together in proximity, you would want them to be further away with one in the middle. And then that kind of creates these non-overlapping channel areas of coverage and so you would kind of keep going like that in this kind of triangular pattern so we covered a lot of related to wireless we covered placement uh, we covered kind of the pattern of, of how you'd place those ap's we covered you know what the differences between antennas would be so omnidirectional versus a patched antenna we didn't really talk about how you would design that because that'd be a longer video and then we talked about network design so to recap Warehouse design, we covered the floor plan, all the things you want to think about. We covered power and backup, how you'd want to think about making sure you have UPS and power in all of your locations. We talked about device management. We talked about wired network in this video, and we talked about wireless network design in this video as well. So if I said anything in this video and you're like, I wish I knew more about that, leave a comment. Make sure you like and subscribe so you get all of our content as we release it, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.